Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of CCC Talks with Mark O'Loughlin and the Cloud Credential Council. Now, today we're joined by Robert Hercock, who is Internet of Things consultant at IoTC 360. And very interestingly, Robert has developed a five stage approach to assist organizations on their IoT journey. Now, Robert, you can tell us more about that shortly. Uh, but first of all, thank you for joining us today. And as a way of introduction, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me here, Mark. Well, my name is Robert Herokop. I'm self-employed consultant on IoT, and my work ranges, basically ranges from a supporting management team to supporting engineers, uh, network architects, and everything yeah. just to get IoT working. Yeah, <laughs> I love that, just to get it working. And we're going to drill into a little bit on today's session about what that actually means and probably some surprising areas for some of our listeners and organizations and uh, which would be quite interesting you know and um, but to get us started robert we were very interested in getting you on ccc talks especially on the topic of iot is not only about interconnected hardware uh, and connected hardware which is what you talk about a lot so tell us what you mean by this and why this is important yeah, of course. In the end, the hardware and the software has to do has to has to work, of course. But I think the main interesting driver, of course, is the business and the way how it affects working people and uh, making the world more efficient and making more uh, life more more improving quality of life. And um, so I think it really uh, it's interesting to to talk about the uh, the benefits which IoT offers and the impact of IoT on business cases of organizations, how they work and how they operate. Yeah, I think that's interesting because you say the impact of IoT on the business, in the business case. And in your experience, what do businesses think about that? Do, do they think about the right things, first of all, or because of the gap between what people know about IoT and reality? Mm -hmm. So you find challenges there with businesses um, in their thinking about how to start and how it relates to their business case. Yeah. yeah, well, perhaps if I may, I would like to say something about uh, the value, the adding the value oh, of IoT. Yes. So, you know, the Internet of Things, the, the things which are connected and are interwoven with the world we live in, and uh, which in our private life and our corporate lives, um, well, these connected things, they, they assist us and they help us. And um, in the, normally you start with a problem, basically, yeah, engineers uh, making this all possible, they start with problems, a problem is a situation which you face and the situation what you want to achieve, and yes. there's a problem, so there's a, there's a primary user which has a problem, and this problem needs to be solved, and for this you de de develop uh, a product, an uh, IoT product. But the most interesting thing now starts. So when you have this asset, this this device or this asset connected to the internet, and you can remotely control and monitor it, suddenly you start using it, and then suddenly you say, hey, I'm now using it for this, but oh, I can also use it for this. And some other people will say, hey, the data which is provided by this device is also interesting for me, for example. Yes. Um, so you start with a, with a product and a primary user, and you end up with a variety of users, secondary users, and variety of use cases. And that's where the, the value uh, growth is. That's quite interesting because many organizations, the way they're set up in the design cycle, as you said, is identify the problem, create solution, go put that into the marketplace. And they focus on that. Now that's a very narrow focus, but that's what they've done, that's worked. But mm -hmm. now you're saying that, yes, go ahead and do that, but also, you've got to now watch out and try and figure out that secondary customer, that secondary use of the data that's coming in through that sensor or that device or that IoT solution, because that might do something different or have different value. Yeah, That's going to absolutely. be difficult for organizations to actually get into their mindset, is it? That, you know, we go from development to product release, it's now in the marketplace, let's sell it, and that's, what, that's our only focus. But now we're saying, You've got to go back and re-examine what you've just done and see what else is there in there. Is there any other opportunity? Um, yeah. And are companies doing that or do they have to be uh, educated uh, on, on this next step? Is that your job? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, well most of the people, most of the people, they just start with solving a problem, and once it's there, all the other people say it's, it's an agile process. So otherwise, other way will say, oh, this is also interesting for me, and oh, wow, now I can see. Uh, you know, it's not only interesting for to remotely monitor and remotely control things, but uh, we can also, you know, do preventive maintenance, for example, or we can improve our logistics uh, related to to the to to all yeah. kinds of processes so that, that that's that's the whole thing it's a learning you know it's 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 not just solving a problem and you you have this problem solved no once you've got this in the field and you're operating hundreds thousands ten thousands millions of these connected devices uh the whole ch world will change and also your organization of course it, it is it is indeed changing there's a case study i saw a couple of years ago about iot an escalator company that put in iot sensors to detect faults pretty much as they're about to happen and will tell the repair person what part was needed so they come out and the first time fix rate was it was poor to start with so the repair person knew what was broken what part was needed made sure it was in the van and made sure it was there first time and fixed it so their fix rate went up phenomenally and they were giving great customer service but they did the extra step they went further and said wow look at all this data we we can we can identify the footfall in a shopping mall where mm -hmm. at peak times and at certain things and hey if, if if a promotion goes on where that footfall goes and where it doesn't go and they set up a subsidiary company and the subsidiary was actually to look at this data and examine it and commercialize it in shopping malls, shopping centers. And uh, that business now makes more money than the original business or more profit and more, more business and is more scalable uh, to growth. I think that that's the thing. But um, far too many people think it's uh, let's put out some sensors, let's put out some hardware uh, and we're in IoT without really understanding how, how they're even going to, to maintain it. You know, so yeah, I, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's uh, also sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, sorry, that's exactly also how I see it. So you start with selling a product and ensuring yeah. that the service level is uh, is is reached which you agree with the customer, mm -hmm. but suddenly the customer say, Well, I'm only interested in, in having this 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 function which the product fulfills, you know, making this yeah. this this yeah. process possible. So the next step might be and you already see this that people say well i don't want to have the product just offer me the, the the server so product as a service and i pay you per hour or i pay you per time i use this product so mm -hmm. um this means that suddenly the relation between you and the customer or the way all the way around starts to change you're not going to sell products anymore you just start to sell services um and uh, so it's interesting that yeah we get into the service aspect of IoT when a lot of people think it's product driven because of the, the the products. Can I ask you a question as well in relation to we started off with identify the problem, design solution, and the way it goes. But a key thing with IoT is, am I right in saying that sometimes you don't know what the problem is you're going to solve, that you create something uh, to see what it does, experimentation. Uh, and you may get it right that's great you may not get it right you learn from it you try something different you may not get that right you try something different and before you know it you have opportunity and the land of gold is 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 is, is, is there for you is that also a sequence in this iot world that sometimes it's worth looking at it but without fully knowing what you're trying to solve to actually understand what iot is from the technology the security from everything yeah yeah of course so it depends also on the market so some market <laughs> segments for example cars uh, you know they're 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 much further further far uh, in, in, into the acceptance of iot than for example mm -hmm. medical systems uh, which yeah. will also come up um, so every market has its own pace but the technology in the end will be everywhere so i really expect that the traditional product sales will end products are dead and everything will be offered as a IoT product, as a service product. And uh, yeah, some organizations, they early started to just go for it, they start uh, with new technologies. And then in the end, when all the, the, you know, the, the standards are standardized, the real standard is there, um, uh, the followers will follow up. So in every market segment, there's a different pace. 
that, actually, that's quite that's quite good to point out that there are different paces and market market segments. As you said, the automotive industry has probably been ahead of this, where the medical industry hasn't. I think COVID, the, the global situation, is changing the medical industry. Um, if you can imagine last year, there was some organizations trying to get sensors that could monitor vital signs at home with an IoT connected internet device so we could free up the hospitals. So only if you needed emergency assistance were you brought into hospital. And if you didn't, you could stay at home on the reassurance that if your sensor gives a signal to indicate you're deteriorating, an ambulance arrives and takes you away, that it's connected. And, and I think that will help drive the acceptance of the medical industry. Certainly, I think they're, they're great case, case studies. And they're not very invasive. This is a little finger sensor that you wear, that you go to the GP anyway and they put on. But now it's connected to the internet. One key thing, I think, with that, though, we'll talk in a few minutes, is about the security aspect. But we'll get to that in a moment, because I have... A very interesting question for you. I don't know, is it a difficult question or not? But I think, well, there's two questions. Um, one of the biggest challenges I think today is the lack of understanding of what IoT actually is. Do you see that in, in your consultancy? Is, is that a big challenge? Like, what what, what is it? Well, um, yeah, well, it's, it's I, I think most people, all, people know it. It's, it. There are a lot of explanations about it, but I always summarize it as connected assets which you can remotely monitor and control. Um, that, that's how I see it. And uh, most of the devices are wireless connected, so uh, wireless technologies. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's devices, so uh, smart techs, devices. Um, some Sometimes, you know, the traditional IoT products, they are sending data basically and then the the interpretation of the data is in a back-end system which yeah. does a with the algorithm makes it smart mm -hmm. so you from data you 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 go to information um when you've got edge products uh oh, the, the 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 information the data is not sent to the to the central system but information goes to the backend system so you put more light stop light information mm -hmm. so so there's a difference between you know sending data or sending information and uh, that's a difference and uh, that's the difference when you talk about IoT or with edge devices yeah it's a big difference there i think um and it's interesting is that iot is not just about iot in isolation it doesn't work on its own of course you need the sensors iot systems and all this uh, platforms but you said it there you also need something at the back end or somewhere back or front end capturing data and data and then translating that data into usable information that can translate that into some kind of i don't know crazy word like insights or analytics or something like that to understand what's good what's the bigger picture so then an organization needs skills in iot uh, in the product side of things and how they work in the software side platform how iot platform works we're also then reaching back into the data, data architecture, uh, big data, and even into, you said AI, there's no point having all this data and having somebody look at it. You need to put some um, automation in there as well to try and do that cleverly and quickly, which we have. So mm -hmm. first of all, do you see the organizations, are they equipped with that level of skill and knowledge or do they need to go to market to get that or can they just bring it in when they want so yeah. uh, where do they get the skills or how did or have they got the skills yeah well i think they they have or their partners will have it so it depends on the skill of course and there are the good news is a lot of um standard building blocks are already available cloud-based or you know there are all, all yeah. kinds of solutions already in the market if you look at selling products basically you know barcoding beeping a barcode selling something to a customer you've got people for that in an organization you have your sales and distribution yeah. but on the other hand people all already have people also on board for uh, you know having online uh, cloud platforms websites up and running so those people are uh, they know how to operate it systems and they are also able to with some additional training they're able to uh, operate a cloud-based management platform, device plan management platforms, of course. So what you're saying is, in your experience, it shouldn't be that difficult. No, 
Matt. Fantastic. That's good. That's, that's good. Because some organizations I've spoken to over the years, uh, you know, they say, oh, where do we start with this? Oh, it's too complex. Oh, we need, multi, you know, seven, eight figure, you know, dollar investments and this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be that difficult, uh, especially if you start off with a proof of concept. You can yes. get access to very cheap sensors these days. You can get access to even free IoT platforms and backends for trial periods. And isn't the case of just trial and experiment somewhat, or have within your IT or within, you know, your organization somewhere where they can experiment freely with some of this stuff now under, yeah. you know, constraints to a degree. You know, now just remind us again. You had a great definition of what IoT is. Mm -hmm. Want to remind me of that one more time? Yeah, well, uh, connected assets or uh, smart devices, so which made from data, uh, data information. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what we want. A very simple explanation of something that isn't necessarily complex. Connected assets and devices um, mm -hmm. and so forth. That, that's really good. Um, so you were talking about, you, you started talking about it there about um, Traditional products. You spoke to me before about traditional products where a traditional seller gives you, you know, we've been doing this for thousands of years. Seller, mm -hmm. buyer, here's a product exchange. And I love your phrase, this model is now so 2020. We banished 2020 to history. Forget about it. We don't want to know anymore. But tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about that. You're talking more about this product as a service and, and all of this. How, how does this fit the IoT story? Yeah, yeah. So, so I I have this this in my mind. You know, this is the connected object analysis. So, with the connected object analysis, you yeah. know what you have to do. At least you in, uh, envision your product, which you normally sell already for for hundreds of years, and, and imagine this product, and imagine that this product is able to talk to you from remote. You know, yeah. it can tell anything about the environment it's operating in. It can tell how the user is using it. Uh, it can tell something about its conditions it's in. So with this experiment in your head, and all of your products at customer sites, and all those products telling you what they are doing, and how they are, how, how they are treated, and uh, how they are feeling, uh, this I think, think is a really good starting point to uh, define uh, IoT use case. So, um, yeah, and then just go for it. Start with it and start making a proof concept and show it to other ones and ask them what they think about it. I love that. Just just go for it, try it out. I think you know we've got to experiment. Um, I think we have to get into the mindset of um, far too often IT can be looked at as a cost, and of course IoT is going to go probably into the IT budget. Maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't, um, but there's certainly some requirement in there. Um, are you seeing that organizations are giving budget towards this to experiment with IoT, or are they just having to try and make do with whatever they have at the moment? Are they being funded to basically experiment? Yeah, yeah. well, this is, this is a question which, which is, of course, if you look at human history, you know this is this is um, this is repeat, yeah. a repeating question. You now, do we need this wheel? Some people would say no, we don't need wheels. We don't have roads. Otherwise, we say, well, why should I need a wheel? I can walk. Well, in the end, yeah. people started to use wheels, and it started yeah. as a nice to have, and now wheels are everywhere. And this is also the case with IoT. So uh, it's inevitable. Everything will be connected, whether you like it or not. And uh, if it's about uh, the disruptive markets or go-to markets. You don't want to lead, you want to follow, it's up to you, but it's going to be there. Absolutely. And um, uh, like your analogies with the wheels, I'm also reminded of the um, the cavemen with the square wheel. And Robert comes along with the round one and they say, no, we're too busy. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. But it's interesting because, look, I've, I've this, I have this phone here, right? So that may as well be an IoT device. For all the sensors and all the trackers, and um, there's a little uh, tracker for when you go for a walk or GPS and all this kind of stuff, behaving in the same way. So IoT is absolutely everywhere around us. Um, it's now in our home. We've got smart speakers. We've got uh, thermostats. We've got smart fridge. You know, we'll order the milk <laughs> when it's empty. You know, uh, do we go too far with some of this? Uh, the smart fridge is the kind of one that I look at and go, I can go to the shops myself, I can see what I have, but I know in 20 years time, people won't want that. They'll want the fridge to be able to restock itself because I'm from an age where you go to the supermarket and you get what you want. But mm -hmm. there'll be the next generation coming up 
similarly to something that went on in the 60s that I wouldn't tolerate today, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do we have this generational thing as well happening that over time um, we'll see more advancement in IoT just because it happens by osmosis almost? Yeah, for every, the, the, the acceptance of new technology, of course, differs from person to person and also the situation you're in. For example, COVID, you just mentioned it quickly. Uh, here in our country, at least, it was a boost from the, uh, the deliveries to home, you know, so supermarkets were bringing all the groceries to your to your home. Uh, so when, when people were not able to, to go to supermarkets, so this was also a disruption and uh, a change. And other people, you know, younger people, of course, uh, they're natively connected you know once they were born they are connected uh, they're used to devices and uh, so yeah. this is interesting it's almost a requirement now when you're born you get your birth cert and the official documents to probably be given an email address <laughs> well, if, I talk, if i talk to the kids here they say email why do you need email you know the, these kids are communicating in a whole different way you know with all these social media so well, i feel so old now like email oh, yeah. you know? oh, sorry. <laughs> now there is um Oh yeah, on the IoT changing business models, um, you're talking about there. One of the things, though, IoT is, um, you said to me before that the products they need now to be 24/7, 365 globally. So, yeah. is there a bigger impact on organisations to maintain that, or are the systems good enough that that happens anyway by yeah. design? Does it put yeah. any extra, you know, thought into how my business should work or should maintain this, or once we yeah. build it, it works? Yeah, so you really have to manage expectations here. So if you traditionally here, you when you sell a product to a company, you know, if you have one year guarantee to a consumer, two years. Um, but in the end, of course, people will, will use products longer. For example, a car, how, are, how long are you going to use a car? How long are you going to use a television? And you have to really keep in, to, in, in your mind, okay, when I'm going to offer IoT products, I have to ensure that the services related to this product are also up and running and maintained during the lifetime of the product. And yeah. if you're going to sell products and you, for example, here in our country, the Netherlands, where you've got dikes, you know, when you when you sell products and they're digged into dikes, you know, you've got to be sure that your services are also operating during yeah. its lifetime. So yes, you de definitely need to have an operations department, I would say, you know, some people taking care of the devices, their firmware, the hardware, the security, configuration management, perhaps interfacing to other products if products used to work or interfacing with other products from other vendors. So this is also something you have to take care of and think about. Yeah, and that's interesting, I think, um, because that may generate cost, okay? And traditionally, you know, companies like reducing costs and our friends in finance look to reduce costs. But I think in creating your business case to get the funding, you do have to represent this as either a new business opportunity or new business or you to be able to charge the appropriate fees to maintain those costs. Because as you say, it might be something you're putting in the, the dike in the Netherlands, but what's it doing from a business or a um, you know an environmental perspective? So the value yeah, well, in there is about understanding the value of what the IoT does as opposed to seeing beyond the product. Is that the key thing in trying to fund it correctly? Yeah, well, there, there. Of course, it's not only the cost, because the the costs are quite low. Eh? Let, let, it's all standard technology sure. off the shelf, yeah. which we already use for mobile phones. The networks are there. Whether it's yeah. a terrestrial network, whether it's satellite, it's all there. It's available. It's it's uh, the chipsets are cheap, so it's all there available. So only the people taking care of it, uh, of course, and. As, as we said earlier, uh, there are standard, ser standardized services, standardized building blocks, uh, which you need to uh, use. Um, yeah. the, the cost, so the costs, I think, are low. Also, the connectivity costs are low. I think there's an operator which says, well, if you send one message every day with a device, it costs you only $10. Once $10 for the coming 10 years. So can you imagine that you have your assets somewhere uh, there? out in the field and for a single payment of ten dollars at the beginning you know when it was when it was shipped you can remotely monitor and control for 10 years so this is amazing of course so exactly. so it's not about the cost you know so um, and, and and it's about value added value so there are more people uh, and there are more use cases so um so I think it's it's not only a cost, and and as, as we look again, if we look at the car industry, they start to sell additional uh, functions. They say, well, we now have developed this feature, 
if you want yeah. to have this feature available, we can remotely activate it. Uh, and then you have your extra, so you can also extra, make extra money from it. Yeah, fantastic. So the key thing there, which is where I wanted you to go to, is that it's not that expensive at the end of the day. It doesn't have to be. Because um, yeah. we've heard of, um, I think uh, GE and a few of these like large conglomerates spent mega millions setting up IoT center or center of excellence only to close it later on. Um, it was too big, too wieldy, too unfocused. Now they're doing lots of IoT in different ways now. I think it's more um, specific to product lines. Um, so it doesn't have to be a big spend, a big thing. So people should, organizations should be trying around with it. You mentioned as well, chipsets are very cheap these days, which is true. So the devices can be very cheap to buy, but can that compromise on security then? Because one of the biggest things with say an IoT device, if you put cheap security chipset in, it may be more liable to some compromise. So have any views on, on what's happening in the, the world on, on that at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So this is a really interesting topic, and um, this is really good to think about, you know. And this is also different between having a product uh, and uh, having a proof of concept, of course. So, sure. so the secu so the security of a product, of course, is to two things related. Uh, first of all, it's related to the platform managing the dev devices in the field. Yes. So yes. you know, so you can have a device, a remote asset, and you can access the device. But of course, the more dangerous part is, of course, accessing the central server, controlling and monitoring all those devices. So uh, yeah, it's definitely um, uh, a very important topic. But cybersecurity is not new. It's already there. It's in place for IT systems and for OT systems. Yes, there's a lot of work to be done. But there are, uh, within organizations, already people trained to do security audits and their organization specialized in it. So there's nothing new there, I would say. That's good. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting thing that um, I think IoT requires so much security, but an organization has a lot of security mindset and protocols in place. So I think you're saying is tap into that and use that. Yeah, there might yeah. be some learnings as to what's different securing IoT devices. Let's go understand that. Let's learn about it. Let's proof the concept it. But let's plug it into our security that we already have, our teams that we have, and make it a part of that. But I think it's, that's a key important step, as you said, from going from proof of concept to going to product. Yeah. Because but, it, yeah. Yeah. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah. But but I also would like to say something on privacy, if you allow me. Oh, absolutely, yes. Tell us a little bit about yeah. privacy. So privacy. security, of course, is important. Eh? Would you be just to mention that? But privacy also something uh, which differs from country to country. This is also interesting. So so different people from around the world think different about that. And also during time, of course, uh, there will people will, will change their mind about it. So when you start to make an IoT service or IoT products, um, you have really have to think about this privacy by design as, as a security by design and yeah. take the the right technical measures. So split databases from from people from users to assets, for example. So in the beginning, everybody had your one big database containing yeah. user and asset information. But really, from the beginning, when you split this, um, uh, you take the the right steps to to set this this set up this uh, properly. I would say. Yeah, it's, I guess privacy is so important. So you've got to have security, but privacy because nobody's you've got to have trust in this IoT world. Nobody's going to use your product or service or IoT anything if they don't trust the company, if they don't trust that the company will do right with their data, if there isn't enough protections in there, or if the company later on has a data breach. I would exactly. suspect that there'll be... Now, we've seen challenges with this not so much in the IoT space, I think, but certainly there's case studies in that. But um, challenges with just privacy, um, even just from social media, uh, giants and things like that, you know. Um, but they're, they're too big that they have big tribes of people, you know. Whereas with an IoT, you, it, you, know, um, it's, you could gain customers and lose customers just on, on one event. I did see a case study some time ago about a casino in... Um, uh, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and um, it was cleaned out. Take you know, uh, what had happened was uh, some 
actor, let's say, some some hacktivist actor went in and found that they had a, a temperature sensor in the fish tank in the lobby. I was okay. able to get into that and through that get into the network and through that get in and clear out what it could from the crypto bank vaults, let's say. <laughs> you know, amazing. And it was just down to um security. They they just overlooked a few little things. And the answer was we didn't know. So the thing is get to know about that. But then privacy, as you said, uh, we're in Europe, um, we've got Irish data protection law, you've got um, Netherlands uh, data protection law, then we've got EU protection law around us. And then we over there, we've got different jurisdictions even within that. So it can be a bit of a minefield, but certainly spend the time, look into it and understand it. Because you, uh, certainly you can fall down, you can lose reputation there. Um, you've also mentioned as well for manufacturers, uh, I love this phrase, you know, so you're saying to manufacturers, uh, probably some of the product developments, you know, are you going to disrupt your market or are you going to be disrupted when yeah. it comes to IoT? So tell us a little bit more about this this concept yeah. and what you mean by this. This is this yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, it was it was this book, uh, this this novel I wrote, disrupted, and uh, this is of of course, you know, you embracing new technology. So. Um, if, if you look at the different market segments, you're, you're selling your product or offering your service already in a specific market, and you will you might say, well, we're very traditional, nothing's happening there yet, we're into farming, for example, or I don't know which market you're in. So yeah. there's no reason to change, you know, there's no reason yeah. to change. So that's, I think, the, the, the starting point of the discussion. Well, although there's no reason to change, um, I think it's always good to think, you know, Perhaps we can improve things uh, if we change things, you know. Yeah, and yeah, perhaps yeah. Uh, if you're selling products via distribution network, if you if you if you start with IoT products, for mm -hmm. example, the the relationship you have with your end customer totally different uh, start to change. You suddenly have a direct connection with your customer, which was yeah. previously not there, for example. I like that. Um, no reason to change doesn't mean we shouldn't change. Or actually, exactly. no reason to change is no reason not to change. I I, I love that. Um, I think you said farming there. Yeah, farming didn't have to change whatsoever. But um, I was at a farm show uh, last year. Well, it was about the year before now at this stage. Feels like last year. Don't ask why. But I was amazed at the machinery. So you see this big, massive farm machine. And it wasn't being sold on what it could do and how it would harvest the crops and anything like that was being sold on the amount of sensors around it that did different things depending on the light, the time of day, depending on the humidity, depending on the, the type of the soil. It was all in there, it was all baked in. It was almost like autopilot for a, for a plane. Mm -hmm. And that was the selling features of it because we know this machine does the stuff, you know, it, it, it digs up the plants or whatever that is. And it, process of this is a lot more and a lot more specific about the environment and um, weed with um the sprays that they use and weed killers and things it could adjust based on what it was detecting so you either save it you don't overuse it you don't over spray the crops which is better for us at the end of the day and then that was um the way they were selling it was you put that on your um your produce when it's in the supermarket that only minimal amount of interventions, let's call it. They weren't putting weed killer on, on the thing, but yeah, yeah, they, and were that's it. So they were getting as close as they could to organic without being organic. They can't call it that, but that's I think the intent of all of these sensors and all of these things was to try and differentiate the people that use this machinery when it came to the consumer in the shop about yeah. almost organic. That's not quite the phrasing they use, but it would kind of Buy it towards their product than the the other product that's on the shelf. Yeah, and and also the animals. Eh, for example, all most uh, all animals now and they start to wear Fitbits. Eh, for example, Fitbit likeish, I would say. So yeah. uh, the cows, you know, they they, you know, the the farmer they get an additional fee when the cows are in the field. So these 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 devices, you know, they they sensor. Okay, how often are they in the field and and are happy they're uh, grazing outside. Um, 
they're also racing horses you know when they start to g giving birth for racing horses is quite a is, qu is quite risky and also in involves a lot of money so uh, you know all these devices they they start to sell, send out signals oh there's there's going to happen something here there's a birth yeah. com coming going to start so this technology you know is is supporting a lot of uh, businesses already as as we talk that's it. Um, I, I, I never thought in my days I would ever hear that the cows were wearing Fitbits. But I've seen that or that type of sensor, but I've seen that and went, wow, well, <laughs> the world's changing faster. It's just changing faster and faster. But then it also means that not only is what we're doing in technology uh, and IT changing, but also the customer of that IoT product or service at the end of the day is changing. The farmer has had to change and has had to become technologically enabled. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, the the people, racehorse people, you know, the, they all now are thinking about not so much the technology, but how to use it and how to do what they did differently. Um, mm -hmm. Is there an opening there for organizations to help educate or train, you know, the absolute end customer, especially in a B2B? Uh, environment like to educate the farmers, to educate the, the, the end users of these sensors at the end of the day. Well, for the specific example with the racehorse, I would say that the the the, the, the guy who was who's married, his, his wife is very happy now because once once there was a chance that the horse was going to give birth, he would stay in the stables, you know, the whole night, and now he's he's able to go back home every evening. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he, he's, get, he's getting a text message. So uh, yeah, IoT improves quality of life. Sorry, it, going back to your question. It, it, it your question. Does, that's I'm just saying, um, is there an opportunity for the organizations that create these IoT solutions to educate their customers and their maybe a new customer base about the use of technology, how to use it and the benefits of it. It's like, yeah. here's the round wheel. Now here's what you do yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you see the mobile network operators, for example, worldwide having all kinds of fantastic offers. Um, they're, they're organized in a GSMA uh, organization and they're having all kinds of examples. Um, they have all kinds of uh, tests also with universities. They're promoting 5G. Um, because the, the technology is there and is available. So yes, they are supporting their, the cloud uh, parties, the, the part parties offering cloud services, also have you know device management platforms in place, um, head-end systems in place to collect data from remote assets, you know. So there's a lots of to, to be done. Uh, there are people playing around with uh, Raspberry Pis. I, I, I also wrote some software of this this birdhouse, yeah. this self-publishing birdhouse. So there's a lots to be lots things can to be it can be done. You know, it's it's all there. It's available. I think it's it's fantastic. Now this leads us to a burning question on standardization. I always start a question like this with: We've got a world. We've got at least ten different types of plugs. I'm sure there's more. You know, yeah. we all have this travel adapter that's about this big with so many different things. It's like a Rubik's cube to get the thing to work, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. When it comes to IoT, where are we with standardization? Yeah, I'm yeah, well, a little bit behind uh, where we should be. Yeah, well, it's a nightmare. So there are lots of there are lots of uh, flavors, I would say. So there are lots of flavors. Now yeah. we we in this IT world we think about this OZ model, you know, where we start with the physical layer in the communication, for example. We start yeah. with the physical yeah. layer, we go up to the application layer. So there are lots of layers there, and what you also see that in each layer. Uh, there's a different pace in technology. So in the lower layers, in the mobile network layers, you know, we have 2G, 3G, 2G and 3G are now facing out sunsets. Uh, we now have got 4G and 5G. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, systems on the application level are still the same. So in each layer, uh, there's a different pace and there are connectors. So th that's where the challenges are. So which version are you doing? Also, you know, uh, security uh, is also improved. Every yeah. every few months, there's new security updates, improvement standards. TLS is being updated. Um, so all these updates, you know, all these standardization updates, all these improvements, I would say, all these improvements, they have an effect 
on legacy systems and IoT systems will be in place and operational for a longer period of time. So it's really critical for your business operations when you start with IoT that you're able to update your security, update your standards uh, of your products. Yeah, and I think, am I right in saying at the moment, it's not good enough to say we will wait for standardization. That could take years. It's yeah. look at what we've had to deal with standardization before. We've had to do security before, the standards for security. Try and understand the gaps. It's 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 not that difficult to, you know, you're looking at a new kind of product. How do we secure this? Ask the questions. You know, how, 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 how do we secure that? How do we do that? How do we do that? You'll end up making your own standard probably for your own product, but that's not too bad once you've gone in and understood what areas need to look at, I, I think. So I think, am I right that organizations might have to create their own internal standard for the moment, but it's easy yeah, well, to look back in the past at what other standards exist and try to bolt IoT into it. Yeah, well, I think that they're all making use of the same technology and platforms. You can, yeah. for example, compare with the website. Every IDS has a website. Some yeah. organizations will with this kind of technology or with that technology. But you don't have to write your own website software. You just need people to, you know, configure it. So it's only a matter of I, setting up IoT uh, value chain is more like configuring standard building blocks, as you do with websites and backend systems. Fantastic. It is. Uh, we sh I should have mentioned that earlier on. It is like building blocks now because you've got the platform. You've got the. You, you just connect all of this together. Uh, yeah. We're in the age of IT now where we do not have to create the basics. They're there. That certainly came with cloud. It was there beforehand, but certainly cloud has given us that. And now cloud-based IoT platforms allow us the software. Mm -hmm. We've got the products we can plug in. We have to do a little bit of standardization around that, but it shouldn't be overly difficult and don't wait yeah. for, for, for the standards. Yeah. And, and something about uh, standardization, I would say, when you have, uh, there, we talk about internet of things, but a lot of internet of things applications are basically intranet of things. So they only communicate with the vendor. So the vendor has its own uh, device remotely operating in the field and it is only one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, yeah. It's something else when you have really a, a device talking with devices in its surrounding area remotely where you have to then you have to maintain interfaces and uh, so that's much much difficult but when you ba basically start with a device collecting data sending it to your own backend systems and yeah. then sending control data back that's yeah. the easy thing i would say that's very that's a very interesting that's a very good point um i do think though we'll have a few listeners i looking back and trying to do a google search on what's an intranet i know the <laughs> phrase i know the phrase but absolutely i understand what you mean there and it, it's a uh, it's where it's going to the the back end that's, that's really good can i ask robert um do we have enough people skilled in the marketplace with enough sufficient knowledge of iot both from a products perspective both from a services perspective from a, a business how do we what are we doing perspective do, do we have enough or is there a shortage of people and is well, this yeah, I think there, 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 uh, there are a lot of people who are able to uh, work in this field, and because it's it's based on technology, which is also used in the IT world or in other worlds. Um, the problem, though, is there with the people with the hands in the field, you know. So it's all, all always, uh, you know, local hands, remote brains with IoT. So somebody installs something somewhere, and yeah. when you install a device every day for a period of, let's say two years, eh, you have, uh, what is it, seven, eight hundred devices in the field, but yeah. what, what happens if you suddenly have to, you know, swap those devices in the field, for example. So, yeah. so really maintaining, maintaining software remotely is really, of those devices is important. So not only think about, uh, you know, to, 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 to make these IoT products, but also please ensure to make it very easy for people to install it, you know, just plug and play. That and it should be, you know, uh, should be stupid proof, I would say. And I would think that would be what you would do, but certainly I think companies probably make it more difficult for themselves or they think about the now, not the later. And it probably mm -hmm. doesn't cost too much more to think about a plug and play. It's probably just an extra interface. And I know all these things, they add up when you, you know, when you're selling millions of devices. 
But for most companies, you know, if you're not selling Fitbits, but you're selling business solutions, you may not be doing millions of advice. You may be doing thousands or tens of thousands. So the mm-hmm. costs don't really come into having an extra component when you map that against the maintenance costs later on. Exactly. So what we're hearing is plug and play is the way to go, is what you should consider, um, which is really good. Very good. Rob, we're coming to the end. Can I just ask you, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? Any other um, uh, knowledge or wisdom or anything else based on the business value? Because I know a lot of this is based about the business, the value, um, anything. Anything else you'd like to share with us before we, we close? Yeah. So uh, I, I've uh, supported numerous companies with IoT and they started with the initial problem and we solved it, of course. Uh, yeah. And then after a year, they say, well, this is amazing. Now we also do this, this and this and this. And uh, so it's really a starting point of a complete change of digitization. So um, so it really uh, brings you more than you. So it answers you questions you did not ask yet. So uh, that's the reason why I say just go for it. Um, yeah. The future's bright. Go for IoT. Go for IoT. You're answering questions you did not ask yet. I love that. And to me, that sums up IoT really. Um, and it's to have that mentality around. You might not know the answer today, but we'll certainly try by iteration and iteration. We'll certainly get there. But if we don't do it, we're going to end up with that square wheel while Robert is driving up the hill on his car with the round wheel, I think. (laughs) Robert, I say thanks so much for sharing your experiences uh, with us today. Uh, There's a lot of for listeners to take away. So, Robert Haircut, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Mark. Great. So this phone. Oh wow! Well. This is a phone. Yes. So this was this was uh, you know from the grandfather's home, and this is really old. So it's from the time the one there was no plastic. And when you talked, you, when you showed your phone like this, I thought oh, I'm going to show my phone as well because the primary function of this phone is still the same. You know, you talk with people. So the primary user is somebody who wants to talk with somebody else. So that's the primary user. And you end up with a product like this, where you send emails and all kinds of, so this is, this is technology. This is evolving technology, you know? So just about finished. And then um, Robert, <laughs> why does it cover this? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. But I, I, during the talk, I just wanted to want to stand up and, and grab it, you know, because this is how, 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 how it goes. This is how it is, this is what it is. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is. and sometimes a good visual like that reminds us of what it is, what we have, and what we've changed, how we've changed it. Um, because I certainly don't relate this to what you've shown me there, but now I do. I absolutely do. I said, yeah, that's the fundamental thing, but it's everything yeah. else that's built around it and all the IoT that's in there that we don't seek. <laughs>